everybody. I'm just being here last time. I was in Colorado. It was hotter there than it is here, so <laughs> it was as neat as I thought it was going to be, but it was fun. Um, okay, um, let's start out uh, public comment period. Go ahead. No? Okay. Consent agenda, the minutes from the previous minute meeting, the appropriations, and Lake Cabin Transfer GE1. Do I hear a motion? I move we approve the consent agenda as approved. Okay. Second? I'll second it. Okay. The moved and second to approve the consent agenda. All those in favor? Opposed? Okay, motion carries six zero. Okay. Um, for just a moment, I just would like to say, I don't know how much time you all spend on the minutes and the appropriations, but it would be nice if we would, um, if you have any questions, be sure and ask Nick ahead of time. Occasionally there's something that comes on, so, um, you know, if you'd study those a little bit and let him know ahead of time, um, because we um, have talked to Cindy and she said, oh, occasionally there's things in there and I'm sure we miss them because we zip through them so fast on our phones or our computers or whatever, but I just thought I'd mention that. Okay, um, old business, Highway 177, Highway Resurfacing update. Nick? Shoot and tell they've started. Um, mm -hmm. I think the plan is to be done with the ship and seal all the way through town, out through Sample Town by Thursday. Um, the parking places downtown on the 100 block will be closed. Um, they're supposed to block them off this evening. They'll be blocked off Wednesday and Thursday, then open back up Friday morning. Um, the reason for that is because those spots don't get a lot of traffic. We're going to get so we need more curing time on those, and we do want something that's getting ran over. Um, that way, you get it lasts longer. And then next week, sometime we'll come back after the chips have been down for a while and sweep everything up, and then do the striping, and then they will be done. Are they going to do the sweeping on this street as well? They'll do sweeping everywhere. Oh, yeah. Okay. I knew that we talked about Main Street, but I wasn't sure. Yeah, they're going to sweep everything because they have to put stripes down the center down through here as well. So okay. they're going to they'll go through and sweep the gutters and everything out. And just, I have a question there. Uh, mm -hmm. Nick, can you give the council an update on the overage costs on this project? Um, it's going to vary a little bit, but it's about 40,000, 40 to 45,000. Um, you figure with a project that size, you'll have about a 10 to 15 percent overage. At the $45,000 mark, we're at exactly about 10,000 or 10 percent over. Um, and that has to do with when we started this project, it's been about two years and the road has deteriorated worse, so we had to do some things. But we've also had some cost savings. Um, the intersection down there at Wood Street, we actually, underneath that brick was concrete, so they were just able to overlay all that and not put in AV3 and do a bunch of dirt work down there. So we have a little cost savings there. Um, they ended up having to do more crack ceiling than they thought they were originally going to have to because the roads um, cracked, or cracked a lot worse than they, when they originally did the engineering on it. So, so, but yeah. Was there a little bit of difference too for some of that handicap? Yeah, so originally what they wanted to do downtown was put in this prefab um, crossing. They may have fiberglass or whatever, but I didn't think the council would probably want that. They want to match what's at the old national bank. They're slipper too. Those 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 fiber glass ones are a little bit slipper. I think. Yeah, they didn't, we didn't get the fiber glass one. We got the composite one. Yeah, that's because they last longer. Yeah. But those little silly things—they're about a thousand dollars a piece, which is crazy because all it is a piece of composite. Um, but um, so there's some of the expenses, and then a lot of it was just deterioration from you know being a two years ago since we had the engineering done. So I think. Before we do 56 and put it up for bid, and have Brady come back and look at 56 again before we decide to apply for the 56 project to make sure we include everything so we know so it's not a surprise. <coughs> Excuse me. Especially we've had some hard winters and you know lots of salt and stuff. Yeah, well it's been a while since we've done anything to 56 and 177. So I've been uh, thinking about this. I just um, want to make sure that we're doing everything the right way. I'm just wondering, and maybe our legal counsel can give us, uh, when we go over a project like that, do, do we really need the council's action for that ex that much more above the contract? Uh, the answer to that depends on what the original contract provided. 
uh, sometimes they'll build in an overage. Do you know if that's the case here? No, theirs was based on, it was an estimate. Um, and they said in the end of the thing, it's said 10 to 15%. Is the and, it, and the estimate was what they've gone over? Yes. Yeah. yeah, that would probably necessitate it. For audit purposes and so on, an uh, action by the council. I would, I, would, I would think that from now on we probably want to have a special meeting or something. To, yeah. Well, to get I, I talked to the mayor and Keith and I tried to get Larry. Um, but yeah. the problem was they needed the decision within the hour because they were starting work. And it, it's one of those deals where you're, do you stop the work or do you get the work done? Well, you know, it's kind of a toss up. So You're just hearing from our legal counsel that so, thinks that we should do it. So well, probably, I, I get that, Mark. We probably so should. So in the future, I'll do that. I'll stop the work and we'll get together and we'll meet. Right. We're making sure the contract states that. So yeah, yeah you could, you know, as part of the contract, you can build in a. Yeah, and I'd have to back on the contract. That may have been in there. I don't remember. It's been. And that might be the best way to go. So yeah. other than because if we have a special meeting, we have to have a meet. We have to have a meeting. Have a special meeting. The says well, not. No, you no, no, have an emergency. You can call. Yeah, emergency. I guess. Yeah. 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 But anyways, yeah. yeah. So it's just one of those things that came up that. They were getting ready to do the work, and we had to make a decision. I consulted with the mayor and the, the two council members on that committee. So, like I said, and I, as I had this discussion with you before, I had no doubt that the council would be okay with it. Right. But legally, you know, we have to do yeah. what's legal. Well, I understand that. Yeah. yeah. And I'll go back and look at the contract. I don't think I violated anything that was in the contract. So, yeah. all right. Okay. Thanks for bringing that up. Okay. North River Walk Extension update. Um, um, Okay, has the plans now for the stormwater runoff prevention plan, which is what they need to get approved in order to do the pre-construction meeting. Um, I talked to Joe Pollack. He's waiting on a couple signatures on that um, plan, and then we can schedule a pre-construction meeting. We're anticipating this week or next week to do that, and then the contractor will start the day of the pre-construction meeting. I don't know when that's going to be in, until we know when the pre-con is, the pre-construction meeting is. But, there is a little bit of movement on that, so. Do you anticipate that we will look at overages on that too because of the delay? Mm -hmm. Not that I'm aware of. I mean, I don't think, but that deal over there is different because you don't have deterioration or anything like that. It's dirt work and concrete, electrical, and the poles. <coughs> so I, I can't imagine getting an overage over there. One of the contractor's obligation to start a long time ago contract and neglected to start on time. Yeah, he's only got so it. there shouldn't be any overages at all. <laughs> no. We're saying with the original contract. Yes. Yeah. yeah. He has, I think, 10 or 12 days to start. So if KDOT doesn't approve the plan in 10 or 12 days, KDOT can technically go to his bond and hire a company mm -hmm. to do the work and come in and take care of it because it's a KDOT contract. Um, we've already sent them their check for ninety-six thousand dollars, which is our cost of that project over there. So, um, so we'll see. It's just kind of wait and see. It's supposed to start August third. That obviously didn't happen. So, it's good to get it started. Now. Glad we're getting in there. Okay, thank you. Um, new business utilities committee um, on the Riverbank Brewery with Jesse and Deidre. Anyways, you guys want to talk about it or you want me to talk about it? Well, you want you to start and if we need to hop in, we'll hop in. Okay, so yesterday, or last week, Jesse had contacted me regarding um, the brewery they're putting together over there and his current water service. <clears throat> um, what the engineering plans, according to Jesse, say is that in order to do what they want to do in there, they need two inch line, two inch meter, and stuff like that. I think that right now they have a one inch line, a one inch meter. Um, the Utilities Committee got together yesterday um, and met with Jesse and Deidre and kind of trying to figure out a way to work with them and help them. And kind of what we came up with um, is the 50-50 ramp. We have to use those funds by December. I have to submit a report in December. You know, we use those funds. If I don't, we have to send those funds back to the Minnesota Housing Project. Um, what the committee's recommending is that we allow Jesse to reapply for the remaining funds. There's only 17,775 uh, left in that account. Um, because that money needs to be used up. So How much did you say? 1,775. 
Okay, and that is for the the sewer, the water. I mean, not the sewer, but the water. Right? That's to help out with the cost of the water. The cost of the water to install it and get the meter and all that stuff is four thousand one hundred and three dollars and twenty three cents from Derek's estimate. And then we also mentioned about the, the, the meter, meter too. Yeah, the difference in the meter cost. Since we're getting ready to go through a program where all the meters are going to get replaced anyway. Um, but what came up in conversation is that we do feel like that there is a need for a new business incentive program within the city of Council Grove. Um, there's nothing in place right now to help out this new business in town. So um, we would encourage that Councilman Bernard, you can speak up if I'm speaking out of turn here, but we would encourage that the council look to have the Economic Development Committee look into coming up with something that we can help new businesses. Um, especially in this particular instance, they're taking a building that was probably on its last lap and they're going to bring it back to life, put a new business into town, they're going to create new tax base for the city. Um, we just felt like that we needed to do something to help. And since there was nothing in place to do that, we felt like that this, this, um, if the council will waive the one-time only application for it, this would help this new business. About what you, we go ahead. Yeah, and, and as it pertains to this project, we currently have no one else who's applied for any 50-50 grant money, so we're kind of up against the deadline now to use it. So we thought it would be good to put it to good use here. Um, we have talked a little bit. I mean, I understand what you're saying, and I, I think this is good. I think um, <clears throat> we get a little sidetracked here, but what you're talking about is some kind of a new business incentive, you know, for new businesses. And I was under the impression when we talked about this earlier that we were to leave that to Greater Morris County Development. And so that's something maybe we need to work with them on and see what they might have because from the very jump, I. I've, I've always felt that that's something we need as a business incentive. Well, I think most progressive cities that are trying to grow have some sort of incentive to attract new businesses. And, and I think we don't have anything in the budget for it this year, but I would encourage, and I see what you're saying, Mayor, but maybe not rely on them for this. Us coming up with a line item where we can we can create something ourselves and then maybe Morris County to have something on top of that. I, I agree with you fully. I just think we, we, get, we were stepping on there. We, 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 yeah, we get GMVC, I think ten thousand dollars a year towards that stuff. So um, it's do. something that we need to can, can communicate with them about a little bit because I do think that business incentive is really important if you're trying to grow which is our goal, you know, to get more business. Well it just it give them another quiver in their Mm -hmm. deal, Carol, and their quiver to, to talk to businesses about coming here. So. And Mayor, you were a part of the council the same as I was when we had the new housing incentive, mm -hmm. which I was not in favor of that program. Um, I visited with everybody who had used that program and asked them bluntly, if you hadn't had that incentive, would you went ahead and build a new house? And they said yes. My thought is we need to be helping people in this community that are that are trying to bring back buildings and houses from from the death that happens to these buildings and I think I personally would support a program that would do that we have such a shortage of housing in this community that something along that for us housing and build business is really needed um, that's just my opinion you <clears throat> have hit on it it's coincidental that Jesse is here because I have planned to call Jesse and talk to him about uh, the economic development, city economic development group, heading down that path, um, you know, the housing path. I know that there's a group, and I, I know that there's at least four or five investors that are really seriously interested. So we'll get, we'll move down, down along that line, especially housing. <clears throat> I think businesses are important too, but housing right now is something that we have a chance and opportunity to do. Interest is low and things are, you know, moving and stuff. So. Anyway, but let's get back to the uh, utilities committee recommendation then. So, what? Why don't you just state your actual recommendation? Uh, well, we were we were recommending that we allow 
and Jesse and Deidre to reapply for another 50-50 grant. Um, the current action is that you're only we're allowed to do it once. But under this situation, because we haven't had anybody else apply and we do have the funds and they do have the need, we want to get council's approval to go ahead and let them use the money. Okay. And then also knowing that the meter, the new meter, yeah, yes. I know if you want that. The, yeah, we would absorb the cost of the meter, but that's all through the um, program. C CTS. For program. CTS, yes. Okay, so would one of you want to, are there any other conversations? You mentioned uh, something about waiving an application. What did you mean by that? Well, meaning that you could only apply one time. Okay, that application. So basically waiving the, the, okay. the, gotcha. the rules to that. I think that's really the only thing that we needed council approval for was that, you know. So kind of a variance from. It's basically where if we don't use it, we're going to lose it. Yeah. And mm -hmm. here's an opportunity to put it back into the community. <coughs> okay. So would one of you want to make that motion? I'll make that motion. Okay. I'll second it. Okay. It's been moved and seconded to uh, allow. The river, river, walk, river bank. I always want to say Riverside. Sorry, mm -hmm. River Bank Brewery. Um, an opportunity to apply for the, a second 50/50 grant to help with their water service. Um, all those in favor? Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Six zero. Thank you. Uh, I just want to say one thing. We did like. Um, the marks that I mentioned that we did use that 50 50 year before, and uh, we did use that right away when we were awarded it. And we put a new roof on the building, it was $33,000, and we got um, money from that 50 50 grant, $3,000 um, to go towards that. So we uh, we did put that money to good use, and we really appreciate everything that you do to help get this offer down. Can you tell you have a new roof? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> outside and not inside. That's a good sign. Yes. So, good. We're excited for it to go. Yeah. Echo the sentiments that there's a lot of good stuff going on, and uh, I appreciate everybody on council in the planning and effort that goes into that uh, with the river walk, um, amphitheater, the new sidewalks, uh, chip and seal, all these projects that are being done. It definitely is noticed. And Although there might be some upset people about traffic jams in Council Road, it's uh, well worth it. So thank you all for everything you're doing. It's, you. It does make a huge difference, and it makes us want to continue uh, to try to make this deal a better place. Well, you know, if there's anything else you need, be sure and let us know. We'll, we'll do. see what we can do. Thanks, Buck. Thank Good luck. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. We're excited. They're any starting construction. So any projection dates at, at all, Dieter? Uh, it's Supposed to be 45 days on construction from when they started, but you know how that goes. And then we have to get all our um, permitting from the federal government. Yeah, really, so. it's 2020. But we'll see. Thank you. Sure. Thanks. Okay. Moving on, City Lake Committee recommendation and cap extension for C44. <coughs> yeah, the majority of me to. Doesn't matter. Yeah, I can read it as good as you guys can. So. Uh, the Lake Committee is recommending an in-cap extension for 24 feet for the construction of a 30 by 30 garage. And this is for C44. And they can tell you what they've seen, because I, I, I didn't cover those, obviously. That's so, also a new cabin. Yeah, that's also a new cabin. Yep. Anybody have any concerns of what, what's your recommendation? Recommending that we do? Yes, we recommend approval. Okay. Any questions, concerns? We're just going to do one at a time. Is that correct? Yeah. I think so. Okay. okay. We might as well. That way, we got a problem. So, so, do I hear a motion? So moved. Okay. Second? Also. Okay, thank you. Moved and seconded to approve the in cap extension for C44. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 6 0. The next one is an end cap extension for I-34. Yep, and they're requesting 
Lake and Main recommendation is to allow for 170 feet from the placement of a of a 10 by 16 storage shed that is currently located at the lake's edge. They need 170 feet for a shed. Yeah, this one's kind of unique, Mark. Uh, there's a the ravine waterway that runs up the south side of the property, so it tapers up like this. They got a septic up there already. And they're down to pretty minimal width, so they've got to go further up the hill to get away from the septic. And because it's narrowing, that's why it ends up so far up the hill. They're actually in a ravine. Together. They also have an uh, existing uh, small shed that they're moving up to this area. That our goal is to get all those moved from down. Yeah, they're not supposed to be down there. This is going to put this one in compliance with that to get it up back away from the 100 foot waterline. My memory sometimes isn't the best, but I remember when we came up with this ordinance, I think one of the things, and Larry might have been employed at that time, did not include mobile buildings as part of that, part of that ordinance. Permanent structures. Right. Yeah. We, we, just, we just had a variance request not long ago on that same subject. Yeah. So then we actually need a variance on this then. That well, well the now this is a shed. This is a shed. This oh, is, okay. is probably I would assume I was assuming this is gonna be permanent because it's sitting on a concrete foundation now down at the lake. Oh, so it's not on skips. No, I don't think it, it's mm -hmm. on concrete, I think. Yeah, that's what I remember it is. Not like one of these sheds that you can buy no. over here. No. And, and, yeah. and James is not allowing future cabin owners to put sheds by the water. Um, so I guess moving this one will get that away from the water. Um, so, like I said, I just remember there was something about sheds on right. this order. This is exactly what we discussed mm -hmm. last meeting, like Larry's talking about. Yeah. And they are building a boathouse at the lake, so that's the. That's the other half of this equation, that where they're taking that shed out, they're building a big boat house down at the lake room. And then they're taking this this building out and they want to relocate it. This photograph shows you a lot better idea of the terrain. Yeah, it's a different line. On both sides. I also have it up here too, you don't want to see it more. Oh, you're sorry. The picture, the actual mm -hmm. photograph. Oh, the photograph of it? Oh, okay. Google you, you can see that. Can so in your opinion, Larry, does this does this need a variance? No, if it's a structure placed on concrete foundation. Okay. I would say that's a permanent structure. These right. other sheds have not been. They all been on skids and okay. portable little buildings. All right. Any other questions? Okay, director of motion. So moved. Okay. All seven. Yes, we moved and seconded to approve the uh, end cap extension for I-34. All those in favor? Okay, opposed, motion carries 6-0. And okay, the next one is for J-23. And the Lake Committee is recommending an end cap extension of 90 feet for the construction of a 36 by 36 garage. Anybody have questions about this one? That's kind of a weird one, too, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's a similar deal almost. And, and so does that move it up to, so it lines up with the one next to it? I don't know which direction that is. So there's one right next to it that extends quite a bit past it. Yeah. yeah. So it almost eases it up with it? I can't, I don't know that. Yeah, it'll be close to that, yeah, when you look at the... I couldn't tell by those drawings. And this is another case of going through the ravine. Yeah, a lot of those trees are actually going to be moved out of there so they can put this in. So it drops off. The closer you go to the cabin, the ravine drops off. And then as you go back into them trees, it kind of still goes down, but it doesn't go down quite as fast. So they really need the exit to get back in that area if they're going to build. Where's their driveway in there now? There isn't one, huh? That's that 
uh, highlighted area that comes in that the light color follows the tree line coming in from the oh, green. Oh, is that okay? <coughs> this looks different than the other yeah. side. <coughs> Any other questions? <coughs> Do I hear a motion? So moved. Okay. Second? Second. Okay. Move and second it. To approve the NCAP extension for J23. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 61. Thank you. Who made that motion? <coughs> um, Keith. Keith. City Light Committee recommendation variance request for K21. All right, Light Committee recommends. Um, oh, let's see. Recommend council approve a variance request to the 100 foot high water set back from the construct for the construction of 21 by 27 by 9 garage. This one is a, a variance. Larry, you're familiar with that. Because the, the lake actually bends around, and that's why it approaches <coughs> on the 100 foot mark. But it's actually right in line with the house. It's set right next to the house, but because of the lake has a little finger right there, it gets too, too close to the 100 foot on that one corner. It's the back corner, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, the, back corner. it's the back area there. And that actually is sitting right next to the house at on the same exact level and it's already leveled out and it's a driveway right now. And they're just wanting to build the, the garage right there where the driveway is. It's where they park now. It's already leveled so it's out. High it's just not. Yeah, it's oh yeah, that's high. It's, it's the same height as a as a house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's way up on the hill, but it's just the way the lake there's just a, a little inlet back there and it turns and goes back in. Anybody have any questions? The neighbors are okay with it. Mm -hmm. I don't see any letters or anything. It won't affect any of the neighbors at all. Okay. I don't think there are neighbors on the. Well, if you look at the <coughs> water here, yeah, and then the other side, it's completely <coughs> hidden from the other house. Yeah. And the tree line over there. Right. <coughs> do I hear a motion? I'll make that motion. Okay. Do I hear a second? I'll second it. Okay, so we move to the second it. To approve the variance request for K21. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries, 60. Okay, that's probably good we went through them separately. It <laughs> wasn't. Different, different situation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Different. Number one of them was different. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Riverwalk Committee recommendation for a concrete work bid. So it's been about Probably three or four weeks now, the <clears throat> Lake Committee, not Lake Committee, the Riverwalk Committee met down there at the amphitheater and we're kind of to the phase where we need to have stairs put in and do the concrete pad for the stage. And, um, so I'm working with Jeff Walsh to come up with a bid sheet, but in order to put out bids, I need council approval to do so. So that's what we're, we're asking, the committee's asking for. Anybody have any questions about this? It'll also be the concrete apron between the yeah. row, first row and the stage. Yeah. And there'll be a trench drain that goes through there. It will take all the water away, too. So. Looking really good. Starting start to see some yeah. problems. I mean, once this is done, you're, it'll really start taking shape. Yeah. This, will, this, this step will be big. I invited <clears throat> 337 of my Facebook friends. My finger got tired, so I quit that, that to uh, donate today. The, the donation page is now up on yeah, Facebook. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, so. Sweet, I'll let my mom know. Mm -hmm. this also, I'll let my mom know. Yes, yes. <laughs> so. This also will include um, the uh, information for the rails on the three mm -hmm. runs of steps and, and lighting out. So that, um, I like the idea of the lighting on those steps underneath mm -hmm. those rails or whatever, however mm -hmm. they're going to do it. Jeff says that it's best to have the whoever's going to do the stairs do the railing too because if you have two different groups, something, yeah. that, something doesn't fit, you know. Mm -hmm. So. Exciting. 
So you need a motion? I would make a motion that we get the bids uh, on the River Walk uh, Committee recommendation for the concrete work and the railings and steps. I'll second that. Okay. And we would second it to get the bids on the concrete work as recommended by the River Walk Committee. All those in favor? Opposed? Yes. Very good. Motion carries. Uh, Memorial Tree Park, number Mark. Um, a while back, I asked the mayor if I could kind of run with this. Um, in the past, when the river walk was first put in, there was a memorial tree program, and you've seen the trees that have a washed river rock at the base with a name engraved into it. So uh, I've thrown together some information here. I contacted uh, Chris Gant out here at her nursery out east of town and she's given me some prices on some trees. My proposal to the council is that we only do four varieties of oaks. Um, the burr, the northern red, the northern red sh schumer, and the swamp white oak. Um, and I have the how big these trees will get. These trees will last uh, two to three hundred years um, if they, you know, if they, are, if they live. Um, beyond infancy. Um, the size of the trees she recommended was six to eight feet. Um, they have a better mortality, or not a mortality rate, but uh, they live longer. Uh, larger trees tend not to uh, make it that first year or two. Uh, the cost of those oaks run between 80 and $120 for that. I found a source for uh, there's, they're called medium river rocks in Manhattan at um, uh, a nursery up there. And I bought one, I brought it in here to City Hall. Um, uh, I brought it in here because it was rolling around the back of my truck. <laughs> I wondered what that was sitting on that. <laughs> That's twenty dollars for that rock right there. And, and uh, there are different shapes, you know, as, as you would expect with rocks. So $20 for, for a rock. Uh, Eck Monuments out of uh, Gardner, I believe it's Gardner, Kansas, uh, were the ones that did them for us prior. And they charge $2 per letter, an additional $2 if they're two inch tall lettering. So I have an example here of, in, Memory of Dennis Delay, which is 21 letters, two dollars each, would be 42 dollars, um, and then just double that if you want to. So basically, my thought here is to make this as simple as possible. Uh, that someone would come in here to City Hall and get a form that would already be made up, and they would pay 500 or 300 dollars, um, and that would include the tree, the rock, the etching the planning and the watering for a year. The city would take care of the tree for a year. And then there would be no guarantees beyond that uh, for the tree. My thought is if the mayor would uh, select uh, a small committee uh, out of the council to go to our parks and actually mark where we want trees to be planted so that if uh, Jane Doe comes in and says she wants one for her late husband. A map can be shown, uh, where would you like it planted? And she can pick a spot where we've already pre-selected that these trees be planted. I think the simplest uh, process on this is the best. Um, and I think a flat fee is the best too. Um, just $300, that gets you a tree. I think you've got a wise idea there because I've already had someone say to me that their group wanted to do a tree at a memorial and they wanted it a certain place, they wanted it to bloom a certain way, and I said, wait, 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 you know. <laughs> yeah, so that's a problem we had with the last yeah. program. Yeah. They allowed the donor to pick these exotic trees that aren't made to live here it's very exotic. well. And this was a town, this was uh, this valley was all hardwood trees and I, I would encourage us to look at good solid oaks. Uh, we are not going to benefit from them as well as multi generations down the road, but if we put in the work now, in the future it'll, it'll show. Um, 
And actually, you'll be surprised. Some of these little oaks that Ken McClinic has planted have grown incredibly well. Uh, so he's got them all over town that he's planted. With proper fertilizer and water, they, they do right. pretty well that first couple of years they grow. Most little trees do. And I'm going to negotiate with, if, if we decide to do this, I'm going to negotiate with the nursery to see if we can get a better break on multiple stones. Um, my thought is maybe if we, if we implement this program, that maybe we buy, you know, 20 of them and then have city crews go ahead and take them to the, to the uh, uh, etching company and that way they're on, on site there and all we have to do is contact them and say, this is what we need one with this on it. And they'll have the stones there in place. Danny told me that's how they did it in the past, that they just bought a pallet of stones and took them to the, the tombstone company and they were on, on, on site. So, but that's, that's what I've come up with and that's for you guys to kind of think about. So what do we do if two years after the tree dies? then it's, it's done. There's no guarantee to, that we'll replace it. So I guess we can contact the original donor and ask them if they want to buy another one to put back in there. Do, do the trees come with any kind of, if they die in a year, we'll replace it if they die Usually, I don't think you can find anything like that. Yeah, that's... Most of the nurses do. Do they? they do well, she didn't mention anything like that to me. That's something I can look into. You might, you might ask her because of the program that we're doing here. Um, you know, even if there's an extra ten dollars or twenty dollars right. to buy a tree to get us five years, right? Because you know, after five years, that tree's established. It's, right. it's either going to something's going to go wrong with it in that first. Well, Danny year. said the problem with with the program in the past was they they would replace them and they were constantly. That the tree would die, they put another one in it, and then it would die, and they put another tree in there, and it would just became a money pit uh, mm -hmm. for the city. And that's why I only, in my recommendation, we only guarantee them for one year. Mm -hmm. Were they getting watered the last time they tried this? You know, I don't know the great details on them. Sorry, Councilman, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I was told that it was because they were trees that weren't indigenous. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> that, you know, and some of them they couldn't even find them the second time. Like mm -hmm. there was some kind of exotic blooming tree or something and they couldn't even get them again or did not know where to go get them or the prices had gone up so we have multiple <coughs> parks that are in need of, of trees riverwalk now has you know had several large trees removed the playground equipment down there is not shaded at all um, there's a lot of avenues there ben i smithfield and the ball fields uh, that whole park needs lots of trees um, I'm sure we can find places in Durlin and Council Oak Park and so on. But that's my recommendation. There's a little bit of extra money in there to help offset the cost of uh, the planting, planting the water. It's roughly around eighty dollars is what I uh, have figured in with my calculations. I had one question. Sure. If a tree dies and it's not replaced, what about the stone that's there? Is that spot now available for someone else, or if the tree goes, the stone goes? I think What's you would. I think you should offer it back to the family and see if they want to replace okay. the tree. Mm -hmm. That would be my thought. Mm -hmm. right. And then if they don't, then I would say we give them the stone, and then that spot comes open for another builder. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I, that I, I would think for that. I think it's still they paid for it originally. Mm -hmm. Right. Spots because someone didn't want to replace a tree. Yeah, I would say if they don't want to buy the tree, and maybe in that case, if they'll just pay for the tree, and maybe the city would plant for no for mm -hmm. no cost, mm -hmm. and to replace it, um, they're not really that expensive. They, I was surprised uh, the cost of the trees weren't that bad. Now, is this the city planting the tree? Or yes, is it Chris. No, this would be the city crews planting the trees. Okay. We have the equipment. Um, wouldn't take long to plant a six to eight foot tree. No. Little little backhoe would do that in no time at all. And then I would think we'd want to stake them, you know, guide guide line them with the hole in place. But, um, I already have class of 1976 has already contacted me. They want to do one in memory of Dennis Belay. There's already been a company. Uh, 
a wildlife group that's already bought a tree that they want for Dennis Delay. And I, I will donate that stone to that effort for the first group that's bought that um, to help offset the cost for that one. Since it happened really before the program was established. Yeah. I like it. Just a, an additional <coughs> question. When you talked to Chris, did you discuss with her the possibility of her using um, things from the Council of Junior and starting trees for us? I did there? not. I, she has a supplier of trees, mm -hmm. and she has some of these already on hand now. And my conversations mm -hmm. with her was that if we had implemented, maybe there'll be a few this fall that can use up the stock mm -hmm. that she has now. Mm -hmm. And then maybe by spring we'll have a order for multiple trees that she can order. She she doesn't want to order a bunch of trees when she doesn't know they're going to be sure. sold. Yeah. And she has like a two thousand dollar minimum of trees that she has mm -hmm. to buy. So I thought if we can use up what she has now, because this is a perfect time to plant trees. Mm -hmm. um, if use up what she has, and then uh, again have the forms here. On, in City Hall, maybe we can even put it on our web on our website, mm -hmm. yeah. so where somebody can go on and, and get all the details. But my, I don't know, council might think differently. I just think simple is the best on this. Is the, the simple thing. I was just thinking in the future, if we if we get somebody to start those trees, we might have sure you know, a, a stock with right. Them, so well, I'll listen with her about it. Maybe she that's might. That's a future thing. Yeah. <clears throat> so. Okay. Do I hear a motion to <coughs> start a memorial tree program? I'll make a motion. Okay. I'll second it. Okay. We'll second it to start a memorial tree program. I'm assuming it was the program that Marcus mentioned. I should have asked that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that okay, Sharon? Mm -hmm. Okay. It doesn't hurt my feelings if you guys want to change something here. I just had to start somewhere. So. Well, I'm sure we'll make adjustments as we see them. Sure. Mm -hmm. So the mayor would then need to appoint a committee. I would like for Mark to pick out the committee. Okay. All right, I'll come up with somebody. Okay. And I can probably And then I'll appoint him. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we do need to locate the spots because like say there's two trees right now that are, that need to be put in the ground here in the next this month or so. so. Okay. Any other questions or anything? Okay, all those in favor? Yes, I can vote. Opposed? I do have a question to council. Is it okay if we negotiate to get a large amount of these stones and do that and send them to to the, the gemstone company? Okay. All right. I'll look into that. That will go into under parks. Problem. Okay. okay um, next is the appointment of city attorney Bill Albertson. Uh, at this time, I would like to appoint him to city attorney at a pay rate of $2,600 per month, and I'd like to have a motion to approve that appointment. So moved. Second. Okay. And then to second it to appoint uh, a new city attorney, Bill Howerson. All those in favor? Opposed? Welcome to the board. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Looking forward to working with you. Yep. Thank you, Mark. We'll try to be nice to you. <laughs> okay, let's start with Jason Booker. Do you have any governing body comments? I do not. Okay. Mark Burner? No, thank you. Okay. Keith? All I want to do is just uh, give everybody a pat on the back for all the efforts of getting all the projects going. I think, like Jesse pointed out, I think there's a lot of good things happening right now, and I think the timing's great. Um, we've been blessed with some really nice weather to get this stuff done in the winter, and I think everybody's doing a great job. So, that's all I got. Okay. Um, Mark? Uh, I'd like to kind of mirror Keith's comments. Uh, I'd like to praise our city administrator. I think he's done an excellent job on these projects. He's stayed on top of these projects. He's caught problems with what's going on in town and, and, and forced the companies to correct it. I appreciate what you're doing. 
Thank you, Bill. Appreciate that. But then my next comment is you probably won't like. So it's a kid. Butter job. The signs for the no cell cell use in town. We've passed an ordinance. Are, are we going Are we gonna keep that ordinance on the books? Are we gonna put signs up that say hands free in Council Grove? Or what are we gonna do? I'm gonna give you my opinion. I think it's really hard to enforce. I really do. I don't. I didn't agree with it when it was passed, um, based off of the reasons it was passed for. Um, because the phone wasn't what caused that girl to get hit by the car. She was not paying attention and ran into the car. So. Well, I voted against it, too. I, mean, I, I, I just I, also voted against it. I just think we need to re-look yeah. at it. I think it, the way it we mirrored what was done in the city of Manhattan, and the way it's done in the city of Manhattan is at the officer's discretion. And the reason for that is you have to be able to prove in court that they were on the phone, which is hard to do, and Bill can probably speak to that. Um, they also have cameras on all of their they have, they have their cameras stop too. sign stop yeah. lights, so they have a little bit more yeah. teeth into it. I think it's a hard thing to do because I think all of us do it. We're on our phones because we're all too busy, and <coughs> I don't think you should text them or I but you know, hands free or. Well, there's already a law in place. That was one of the reasons why yeah, I voted against it. There's, there's already a state law about law. texting. Yeah. That's already on the on the books. So we're just duplicating what's already been. My point is, we have passed it, and uh, what are we going to do? I mean, is there a process for taking it back off the books? Yeah, you can make a motion at any time to take an to get away with an ordinance. Yeah. Repeal it. Repeal it. Is is there a problem with Bill? I'm going to ask you this: Is there a problem with having the ordinance and it not being strictly enforced? Well, no. Other than I think. Mark's point is a good one that it just clutters the books up and, mm -hmm. and you know has basically no practical effect. Yeah, we're doing it say you have an ordinance. If we're going to have it, we, have, we need to put the signs up. Yeah, you know that, um, because the time, the one time that our officers do stop somebody, is that they're going to say there's no signage up in here. Yeah, I yeah, know. Yeah. And, and, Probably in court, they could probably get that tossed out in a heartbeat. Yeah, some kind of selective enforcement theory. Yeah. And because, I, I mean, I, I haven't paid attention, but I'm sure it's probably like everywhere else. It probably a dozen violators out there right now while we're speaking. Well, I see it on a daily basis, but if if, if we're not going to enforce it, yeah. why have it on? Uh, that's, yeah. that's my point. I mean, I think we can encourage it just as common sense not to do something. Right. Like so if we don't want to put signs at the entrances of our town, then we need to probably take it back. I wonder if we should, I'm just throwing this out here, if we should put this off to the next meeting, allow the citizens of Council Grove some time to get a hold of our, of the, the, their councilman and the mayor and, and see what their thoughts are. I don't know. Is that a good point to put it in the notes of the meeting that we're seeking to put this opinion on? That was discussed, yes. That's a good idea. Okay. You, you, got, you got that, Marcus? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. Other than that, I'm, I'm tickled again with the progress that's going on here in this community. Um, I'm proud of this council for what they've done. Um, and this is no offense to Councilman Booker over there, we're not a bank. <laughs> we're not, you know, we don't collect money to just hoard it. Yeah. We collect the mill levy to improve our city. And I think this council has done an excellent job in doing that. So I, I congratulate each and every one of you. That's all I have. Okay. Nothing this evening. Right. Okay. Um, well, I'd just like to um, encourage you when you see Jeff Blosser to say thank you because he is making that amphitheater work down there. And thanks to City Crew, they're they're down there and they have been contributing a lot of uh, time. Yeah, they've been doing a lot of dirt work and they set the third row of the seating. They finished um, the third and, and started the fourth. Yeah, they're yeah. just going to be down there Thursday and Friday and the street department guys are going to be down there helping him sit. He wants to sit um, five rows. He wants to go up to five rows now. So they're going to try to set two rows on Thursday and Friday. So 
Has the stone quality improved since? It has. So what what we found out is that the stone that is not in good shape, we can actually send back. Um, so that's what we're going to do. And the, they've been told the place we're buying it from, we're telling them we need a certain type of stone. So if you have jump stone, please don't include it. And we're going to send it back anyway. Yeah. So the other thing is we can sell it. I think the stones are thirty-eight dollars a piece or something like that. Hold. So. If, Somebody wants some stones for their yard or something instead of paying their fetus in the back. Um, somebody can do something like that. Or we can use them like, I'll tell you one of the things I don't like about our apartments is our split rail fence. I hate them. Because um, we always have to fix them. And my thought has always been big limestone rocks like that and line the areas of the parks with limestone. I know that's one thing we talked about. And mm -hmm. <coughs> at the river walk up there where we had a split rail fence, putting big limestone blocks out there and have a partner somebody cut the middle out of them so you can plant flowers in them or grass. Or maybe do a, a planter and then a seat, then a planter and then a seat so right. people can actually sit along that edge as they're walking. That's a pretty good idea. How many have they got to get it set back there? Oh, it's probably 15 of them. Okay. 15, 20. Like I said, there's some annoying. I think they're 38 bucks a piece. Um, but we always have trouble down here at the ball fields where people run into them and break them. And I, I just don't. You it said, real yeah. 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 yeah, well, yeah, if they hit the limestone, the limestone's going to win. for sure. Yeah. We had the same problem over at Prim Park, yep. uh, on there, that, mm -hmm. that, that's always getting run into or rotted out or whatever. So, but a lot of companies, and they, these companies might not do that, but a lot of companies will, if it's something that's kind of faulty or seconds or something, they might. Take half price for them. Just tell them, you know, if he'll just take half price, we'll just keep them. Yeah. You know, instead of chipping them. We're getting back. such a good deal on them that this company's not going to do that. I mean, we're getting a steal of the deal on this rock. I mean, $38 of stone is. Yeah. Plus our hauling. Plus is. our hauling's really cheap, too. So it is. We're, we're getting a heck of a deal. Good. What we're I did not realize that. Um, I think those <clears throat> prefab ones, <clears throat> I think we were, to do all the seating was over 80 grand. To do all the seating here with this stone is, I think, what was it, 30, 30 or 36,000. Mm -hmm. And that's the difference in the cost savings. So it's, it's a considerable amount. And some of them are going to need a little. I, I worked one day on knocking some of the high spots off with a chisel. There's some, some of that's going to have to be done. But yeah. um, like Jeff said, you know, the bottom line is that you're going to be sitting on a stone. I mean, yeah. you <laughs> yeah. know, it's, but there are some high spots that's going to make it a little uncomfortable that needs to be knocked off there. Um, but the way it's set up, there's enough space between the seating that you can set up a bag chair too, so you don't have to sit on those stumps. So. It looks pretty good. I wasn't sure when we had the first row going in how you just couldn't visualize it. But once you get the first, second, third row in there, it looks pretty neat. So once that concrete's poured in the first section of stairs, I think it's really going to, yep. that's really, it's really going to pop. Yep. You know, so. Good thing. Anyways, I saw you were along your No, so. I just, uh, but I, I just want you to recognize Jeff because if, he, if this hadn't happened, I mean, I asked him how much fill had come in, and he estimated that, and there's been more since, that it's probably at least 450 dumplings of fill and dirt that have come in down there, and that's all freebie. Yeah. Um, so it's just, it's amazing what we've. Been able to pull together Jeff is a master at being able to find things Figure like that. Out. Yeah, yeah. It's, just, anyway. it's just pretty exciting to see that. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> okay. um, Bill, do you have anything? No, ma'am. Okay. Nick? Just one thing. Um, I've been in contact with CTS. The kickoff meeting is scheduled for October 20th at 10 a.m. here at City Hall. Um, with them, and after that, they were planning on getting started on the meter replacement and, and the, the project as a whole. So, say that date and time again. Uh, it is October 20th at 10 a.m. Here in Seattle. Yes. And then Christy um, for CTS, she's going to be, her office is going to be over at the armory in that boardroom there because she needs a place to set up in order to track everything and make sure she's getting all her stuff done. So we're going to set her up over there at the armor. That way she's not close proximity to anybody. So. Yeah, that, that's all I got. Okay. Um, I don't think that I have anything this evening either. So 
I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Okay. Any second to adjourn? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries.